Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Grit, Give, Recognize, Implement Time podcast. I'm your host, Steve Nathanson, CEO excuse me, and founder of Strive for More. We're going to continue our topic of engagement kind of holistically. We talked about how to get people to be more collaborative, how to get teams to work together more, and hand in hand in that is how do I engage, re-engage my direct that's an extension of what we've been talking about. Very f- first and foremost is do you know your direct reports? Because therein lies the answer. When we talk about engagement or re engaging somebody, we have to know them, we have to understand them. What do they value? We touched upon that last. What is it that they want? What is it that they want? Say work-life balance, career growth, career development. What is it that they want to do? Who do they want to perhaps work with? What kind of projects interest them? What are their strengths? And just because something's a strength of theirs, is that something that they want to be given all the time? One of the traps that we tend to fall in as leaders and managers is we tend to put a lot of work on high performing employees because we know how capable they are and we keep overloading them, keep giving them the tough assignments because we know that they can get it done. But are you actually creating a circumstance to burn them out? Quite possibly, it's the honest answer. We can very easily overload those high performers because we give them too much, too many things that are challenging. Sometimes people may want that break, may need that break. I wonder if any of this is starting to sound familiar. There's themes we've talked about before. This gets back to that very first thing that I said first and foremost, is knowing our direct reports. When we align things with who they are, we talked about that motivation, intrinsic motivation. People do things for the pure love of it. And the closest we can get as external motivators, extrinsic motivation, is to align something with who someone truly is. That can engage them because when you know who they are, you know what they want, you know what they value, you know what they like to do, we can bring them back in the fold by giving them those opportunities, by working with them. That's going to make them happy. That's going to re-engage them. You know what? And if they want career growth, career development, opportunities, and they don't see it, and they're going to continually get frustrated because it's not there. Part of the answer is to start listening to that and provide that to them. And this is now actually branching into how to re-engage them. Because people can easily get burnt out. They can easily get disengaged. And one of those common trends is they may try to do something over and over again, but always run into a brick wall. So why is it worth it? The answer is never going to change. Nothing's ever going to happen. No one's listening to me. They don't care. These are the kind of things that can disengage individuals. So how do we re-engage? We talked about how to engage them. Simply put, align with who they are. Knowing the direct reports is at the heart of it. Same thing here. If we know what's disengaged somebody, then we can actually address it. But that's the first thing is we have to understand why is someone disengaged? Are we actually calling it out? Are we addressing it? Are we working with them? Is what we're putting in place truly actually different than before? If we're just giving lip service, 
that's going to disengage them even further. It's important for re-engaging people that what we say actually comes to fruition. Not only do we talk the talk, we walk the walk. That's important because you may have felt this yourself as well, actions speak louder than words. And when we're disengaged at some point, we're going to say, I'll believe it when I see it. Those are the kind of phrases we can listen for as well, by the way. When we hear those kind of phrases, we know someone is disengaged. They don't believe. That's going to give us a clue. What is it that they said that about? So we may not even have to have a conversation with them. I mean, I'm still going to say that we should. <laughs> I, I do believe in that. But sometimes if we just listen, we can actually pick up on the clues that are going to let us know why someone is disengaged and how to fix that. You know, they had this leadership development track, but they've taken that away and they keep saying it's going to be brought back, but it's been two years. I'm going to believe it when I see it, right? I have no faith in that. That's kind of a clue. They're looking for leadership development. They're looking for that growth. That lets us know what specifically that they're not happy with, that is disengaging them, and then actually how to address that. Let's just call them Sharon, for an example, in this, uh, in this instance. Maybe I follow up with Sharon after hearing that, and it has. Sharon, if we were going to give leadership development opportunities, what would you want? Ask them. Truly hear them as well. Actually being heard can go a long way. If I feel like I've talked to somebody, I've opened up, I've shared with them, and all they do is just disregard what I've said, they don't care, they're not listening, I'm going to feel disengaged. So when we have this conversation, we need to truly listen. We need to truly make the other person feel like they've been heard. Ultimately, if things don't turn out the way that they want, if someone feels like they've really been heard, somebody listened, what they had to say was considered, that's going to go a lot further than them feeling like things were disregarded they weren't listened to, and no one cared. Ultimately, the best thing is to hear them and help put that into practice. But even if we're not able to do that, if they know you truly care, that goes a long way, and that can start bringing them back from the fold of being disengaged. So there's a lot that's on us as leaders, as managers. If we always put it on the employee, We're not going to get there. People get disengaged because of the organization, because of people. And if we want to bring them back in the fold, we can't do this guesswork. We have to truly understand what's important to them, who they are, what's causing the disengagement, and then actually address it and truly mean it. These are the keys to engaging and re-engaging your direct reports. Again, like last time, this can go a lot more in depth. It depends on the individual that we're talking about. And that can be a in-depth conversation of what you've tried, what you've seen, and how to guide and help you to re-engage that individual. These are frameworks, frameworks meant to be applied to the uniqueness of individuals. I'd love to share more. If you want, please let me know. Reach out to me. You can always contact me at steve at striveformore.com. Uh, visit our website, striveformore.com as well for more information. And until the next time, be the movement in your life.